it's been a couple of months. It's getting towards the tail end of the season, but there's still a lot to see. Mike Landis has been keeping an eye on the garden. Let's go check in with him. Hi, Cord. How are you? I'm doing great. It looks Good like you. uh, you've got a raised bed of tomatoes here that runneth over. This is the bumper crop, the uh, the heart of the season right Boy, here. you've got it. I remember when we were here a couple months ago, we could actually see these tomato cages, and now they're completely obliterated. It looks like not only have they reached the top of the cage, they're water falling over the side. We had an unusually wet and cool spring and so much vegetation that they continue to grow and grow and grow. Wow. Now, uh, hog wire, four and a half, five feet tall, and good sturdy stakes, and that's the best way to train them. Right? The only way. The only way. The only way to do it. Okay, and in an 80 square foot raised bed, you've got eight different varieties, and what I like is the fact that you not only have heirloom, you've got the standard hybrid ones well, as well. Well, that's right. Early girl, my favorite tomato, yep. which is early to ripen. Okay, a medium sized tomato. Medium sized. This is early girl right here. It's that's late right. in the season and it's still producing, right? It's loaded. Yeah. It's loaded. Uh, wonderful tomato. I really like this one too. Uh, green zebra. Yep, love that one. And uh, tigerella, which is really really one of my favorites. It's uh, just full of juice and flavor. Okay. And they're both heirloom, right? Yes, they are. Very flavorful, both of them. And, and they used to be that it was really hard to find heirloom tomatoes, but I've seen them in local nurseries now, even as started plants. I mean, you don't have to go looking for um, unique seed company catalogs to find them anymore. They're, they're getting more available, aren't they? Well, they are. The consumers are demanding that they be available. I know that this one's your favorite, the, yeah, the that's my Tigerella. Favorite. Tigerella. It's great. Yes. And I really like this green zebra because it is, in fact, green on the inside. It's kind of unusual. Mmm, great tomato. Unusual flavor too, I like it. Mild. Okay, acid. now, I mean, couldn't help but notice, right over my shoulder, there was a huge tomato hornworm. It looks like it's already eaten a lot of your tomato plants. This has happened since last night. This wasn't, no fooling. That, this was full last night, so he's been busy. As an organic gardener, you just have to put up with a certain amount of damage. It's I mean, small, it's minor compared yeah. with the benefits of going organic. Yeah, great, all right. This one's all filled with squash and melon. This is a squash and melon bed, yes. And it looks like it's way full, too. Well, we planted bush varieties, but as you can see, they've uh, sprawled outside of their normal habit. So homeowners should plan on getting a little bit bigger than what they say on the seed packet, Give right? them lots of room, because they'll always eat it up. OK, what do we got in the basket here? Well, this, this large zucchini type right here is right. raven. That's the, the cultivar name of this. Uh -huh. And. Uh, this is way too large to eat right. for fresh squash, but right. for bread making or for squash soup, it's fantastic. It'll have a great big old seed core in there. You just take that out, though, and just and skin the skin off of it. E exactly, and, yeah. yes. Put it in the blender. Uh, this is the size I like to eat them. Right. This is the normal size one. would pick them up to this one, and this is gold bar. It's another zucchini type. Wonderful color. So you want them somewhere between this size and this size. That's correct, That's yes. optimum yes. eating size. Okay, and this is a raven also? This is raven also. Look at okay. the size difference yeah. there, if you can see that. And how long does it take between here and here? Well, this is about uh, eight extra days left to grow, <laughs> so it doesn't happen very, you know, I mean, it happens quickly. Yeah, you turn your back and you've got a, a monster on your hands. All right, now, um, the other thing that I see that's growing right into this uh, area here, tomatillo, right? Those are volunteers. We planted those about three years ago, and every year we have them, so we don't need to plant okay, them. They're so, all volunteers. All right, so it's a non-hybrid, so a tomatillo drops to the ground, it leaves a season there, and it comes up the and next year. And that's what they look like when you want to harvest okay, them. Okay, they get brown on the outside. The skin gets a, kind of a tightness around the, around the meat, and it turns brown. Okay, and before they felt like they were hollow inside, and now they've got this... Uh, and that's the meat. You want to boil this uh, in some hot water, right. and uh, it'll soften up, and they make fantastic salsa. Great salsas. Fantastic. Okay, this guy. This oh. is Rhone de Nice. This is from France, and I like it a lot. Okay, is it a zucchini type? It doesn't taste like zucchini. It has its own flavor, and uh, normally this is as large as you want to pick these. I like okay. them a little bit smaller, tennis ball size. Tennis ball size. Ronde yes. de niche? Ronde de niche. Wow. Ronde All de right. niche. Great. Now, what's this unusual looking thing? It almost looks like a gourd. Well, that's a yellow scallop, and that's way past its picking stage, okay. but for decorative use, it's fantastic. But the point being that a hard shell, if you don't want to eat it, you can use it for decorations, right? Any of the squash. Correct. You them on a long time, they'll Correct. get a hard shell, they'll Correct. last. They're good for something. Good for something. All right, great. Now I'm smelling something. What am I smelling? Well, you can see it right here. Yeah. And uh, the variety is it's a French variety. Yeah, that Charente, that famous Charente. And it's Charente, yes. French orange is the actual variety. But you've got to see the you've got to see the flush on this. It's fantastic. It's a very bright orange, so perfumey when it's ripe that uh, you know it's ripe. Oh boy, look the at that. First, first Charente from this garden. Look at that. Wait until you taste it, though. Oh man, oh, I hope that heaven smells like that. Whoa, that has got such perfume, I can't believe it. Try that. Thanks, man. Mm. Wow, that's all I can say is wow. You'll never get those kind of flavors in mm. the store. 
really intense. Only from the home garden. Really intense, man. That is worth the price of admission. <laughs> great, great, great. Wow, I love it. Let me show you the eggplant. Mm. I've got so many varieties over here, the colors alone will knock your eyes out. I want to stay here and finish that melon. You weren't kidding about all different colors. Oh, we've got everything, shapes and sizes and different colors. Now, when we were growing up and we went to the or supermarket, there was one. There was a great big uh, one that's shaped like this real dark. Oh, that would have been in the... the Black Beauty, That's the right. Italian type, type eggplant. Right. But, uh, most we, of these are coming from Asia now. Right. We just didn't know about them. This has got a great name. This is Ghostbuster. Does one it? of my favorites. I just for enjoyment of looking at it, yeah. if nothing else. But on the grill, or eating it, it's fantastic. Now, okay, so if you're going to do it on the grill, you sli slice it lengthwise? Slice it, salt and pepper it, olive oil it, put it on the grill, and uh, you'll Great love side it. dish. All you'll right. Okay, so Ghostbusters, this one's got a little pink tinge to it, great so shape. This is Rosa Bianca. Rosa Bianca. All right. Italian again. Uh, Rosa Bianca. It sounds like speaks it. Speaks for itself. All right, the old Ichiban. This was one of the first of the Asian types to come into the country, right? That's right, yes. And uh, I like to pick them with the shine on them. You notice the dullness yep, starting to get on yep, a few of these? Yeah, both of these, yeah. These aren't really at their peak. I believe this These is... are not. So look for the shine when you're picking them. Okay, and then this is the Imperial Black Beauty, which is the one that we're pretty familiar with. And, okay, anything else we've got in there? The uh, little Rosita. Oh, that's right, yeah. That's another Ros beautiful spot. Look at the color of that. Eggplant. That is pure violet. Well, look, Speaking of beauty, these things are so, the, the plants themselves are so wonderful. Blossoms have turned into magnificent different. fruit. Look at this. Wow. Just look at the set. You know, you're making people in other parts of the country real, real jealous uh, right it's now. It's not like this every year. Yeah. You know, this is one of those exceptions. Yeah, year. but when people can only get them up to about this high on one eggplant, they're not going to like seeing this. I know, four <laughs> feet, uh, that's stretching, or five feet. But, wow. Uh, but, it looks like they're, it almost looks like they're uh, Christmas ornaments hanging on there. Yeah, that is really no, it's, a thing it's one of the most attractive things in the garden next to the peppers where I'd like to take you now. Oh man, it looks like we are now <laughs> entering Pepperland oh, here. Look at the colors on these too. <laughs> My gosh. But you know, if they, even if they didn't taste so good, it would be worth growing these just because they're so beautiful. I mean, this is a centerpiece for uh, some table. That's right? exactly what they're used for a lot of times until we're ready to eat them. Fantastic. So uh, we don't have that much space here, but you've managed to get, how many varieties have you put in? You know, there? we probably have close to 20 varieties growing this 20 summer. different varieties. Yes. And some of them are old favorites and some of them are new things that you've never tried some before. Some are brand new. Uh, yeah. Well, the, the old guys, the Standard Bell, which yes, uh, yes. everyone grew up with. There's a chocolate one, which doesn't taste like chocolate. It's just a brown, it's just chocolate sweet, colored. It's a sweet form of bell, but right. very decorative. You know, the color patterns and the color diversity is what makes it. This beautiful. is a new one I haven't tried. It's oral bell. Uh-huh. Beautiful color. Yeah, it's a beautiful golden color. And these will turn red, actually, the longer you leave them on. Okay, and so will the, so will the green bell pepper. That'll turn into a red bell if which you leave is, it to maturity. They go from kind of an acidic green flavor to a real sweet flavor sweet as they turn, turn red. Tremendously, tremendously, yeah. yes. Now, does, do you have one pick out of all these 20 different varieties that, that you really like? Well, this year, my favorite is this, what's called a hot apple. I've never grown this before, but it's a very, very, very meaty one. Huh, and, go ahead, uh, I'll... Hold you can take a look at the meaty, meaty It feels like it's it. solid. It's solid. It's uh, it's beautiful. It starts out yellow, and now it's starting to get this blush orange color. But you can just see the, the thickness of the of the meat. Oh wow! Look, look at how thick that. that is. And again, this on the grill is uh, just one of my favorites. A lot of spice added to the meal. Okay, now it runs from zero on the Scoville scale, that old-fashioned Scoville scale, which rates the hotness of peppers from right. zero from bell pepper to about about three thousand for a jalapeno. Well, this is a jalapeno. Okay, so that goes here. And then you have what's called the Scotch bonnet, which is at the top uh, at of the, the scale, three hundred thousand Scoville units. You want to wow. try one? All right, what's the just, heck? Just taste this. I mean, this is uh, the end of the garden anyway. So. Yeah. Well, it could be the end of me. Before, before I uh, do that, uh, let me just say that uh, we've had a lot of fun in our own garden. It isn't that big. You can see that we've really grown a lot of different things, uh, tried some new varieties, some exotic things. We hope we've inspired you to do the same thing. Um, you don't have to grow a habanero, right? But uh, if you want some heat in your life, let's go for it. Or they can do spice. that. Or some spice. <laughs> Whoa! You need, that, you need to cool off. Need to cool off. I think there are any cucumbers left. Come here, I'll show you. Come on, let's go. <laughs>